So my point taken is understand what pond they're swimming in. Just remember the intent of that platform. Friendly competition, accountability, teamwork. You know, they'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm dabbling into it. And then you can ask them like, do you see a lot of your clients coming from there? Use it as a hook, for example. This can go with I want to help you get more DMs using What do you guys think? Actually, that was fire. fire. Yo, Marquez. All right, how's everyone doing? Do you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. We're awesome. all stoked. What's up, We're all stoked. What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. Running after meeting after meeting, man. Which is good, guys. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you want to give a quick introduction about yourself? Yeah, for sure. I'll dive into that, man. So yeah, guys, nice to meet you. I'm an agency owner, just like you guys. I've been doing this since 2018. If you guys want to know a little bit more about my journey, you guys can check it out in my last reel. Um, it basically just highlights how my journey has been. But essentially, I've been in the gym niche since 2018. And then I pivoted to helping other agency owners like yourself get more appointments and clients using IGDMs. And yeah, I've scaled my gym agency, however, to 20K a month. And um, just looking to help, again, more of you guys, you know, scale your own business up and have that awesome lifestyle that Arturo has. So with that said, you know, I'm kind of an open book. You guys, however you want to run with it, we can ask questions. I can deep dive into what's working right now or what's killing it. But um, yeah, I'm here for you guys. So Marquez is a beast at Instagram DMs. If you want to do Instagram DMs, Marquez is the guy. Do you want to give a quick overview of of how you do it uh, just so everyone can really understand the whole process like just an overview of the process yeah 100 percent. so a quick overview the best way i like to say it is just simply imagine another agency owner who's done it to 20k a month plus and is still looking to scale imagine a person like that being plugged into your business to do one thing bring you more appointments especially you know if you're in school especially if you're in college if you're in a full-time job all that time being spent from an agency owner booking more meetings. So when you are working on your agency, it's on the most important ROI activity, which is taking more sales calls and closing clients, right? Other than fulfillment, that's another topic. But for now, that's what I do to help our agency owners scale. We're currently working with 40 of them. And um, yeah, I literally plug in practically two appointment setters to each of the agency owner. They're sending out 200 plus messages a day and obviously crafting the script and all that good stuff. Along that, we also do some site coaching too, so that you guys close the deal or close the appointments I bring. But anyways, thanks, Sajara. Yeah. Of course. So what I'm thinking is we do like five, 10 minutes of quick Q&A just so everyone can get some quick questions instantly out. And then maybe we could build out a script and a little system for someone in here. How does that sound? Let's do it. All right, guys. Well, he's an open book, as he said. Instagram DMs is his main thing, although he's really good at literally everything else. So also, Marquez does a lot of VA management and VA handling. So go ahead, guys. Marquez, uh, I have a quick question, bro. Hey, what's up, Kay? Uh, How are you? I'm good. I'm doing good, bro. I'm doing two hours of cold calling every day. I used to do around 20 DMs on six different Instagram accounts, but it didn't work out at all. I was barely getting any replies. So now with their tools help, I got um, two VA which I'm just kind of training now and yeah so I had a question like how do you train them and like how do you get people to open your Instagram DMs and kind of trust you perfect yeah and I'll dive into it as much as I can uh what is your niche Ken if you don't mind it's... actually just saying it verbally to me oh, yeah. yeah no it's uh well I went into testosterone clinics like two weeks ago yeah, that's a that's a niche I've heard many times. I haven't dive, dove into it. And the thing I, I'm talking about diving into it is where they hang out. It might just take a couple of questions. But like, that's the other thing you guys want to know is like, where do your clients hang out, right? For example, I know gyms are hanging out on Instagram because that's where they want to get clients. So it's med spots. Dentistries, you know, maybe the same thing, but um, they're also doing emails, right? Realtors, they're on the phone left and right. So if they're on the phone, for example, realtors, cold calling them is a great option. Maybe dropping voice message shops, right? Which is killer if you have a uh, go higher level. So it allows you to send hundreds and hundreds of voicemails and then they just call you back. So my point taken is understand what pond they're swimming in and, and, and fishing them right in the right pond. So for you, oh man, um, I was hoping it was going to be like real estate or anything fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, all good. What's your current offer right now to them? Um, I guarantee them five prepaid deposits okay and then the last part is it like or we refund you or or you pay? Uh, it's paid at the end of the month if they don't get the results they don't pay they just cover the ad spend okay are you collecting actually the uh, service fee up front then or no uh no no it's at the end of the month well i still didn't get a client so i can't really tell you with it but okay uh, it's i will i will get it at the end of the month so once i deliver the results okay so here's the thing about that specifically i don't want to dive into the weeds i want to make sure i give time for everyone's questions too i would say 
don't do that because the, the commitment to them actually being like, I didn't pay this guy yet. No, I get it. In other words, it's a free trial. And that's what I'm trying to say there is like, you're basically doing a guarantee and then saying, hey, if you want to continue after 30 days, uh, it's just this amount. But if I hit the five prepaid deposits, then they have to pay. So that would be in the contract. So it's not as if they can just... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then that works too. Now, my last question is where do they hang out? Like I mentioned two minutes ago, are they typically like those who have like LinkedIn, emailing, where are they hanging out to get their own clients? That's a good question. I didn't really think about it. I just went like with, with what like kind of her tour said, for example, Facebook. So I just dove into face. I didn't really think about it, to be honest. Okay. No worries. What, no worries. Would you, what would you recommend for people who are trying to figure out that exact part of where their market stands, where their target audience sits? Like, what would you suggest for them to do market research? Like, how would you go about that? That's a great question. And I was going to dive into it. So there's two ways. One is by taking action and just figuring it out yourself, right? And that means taking KPIs, which you guys all should. You guys should keep track of how many messages you're sending on each channel, how many pause replies, how many booked appointments, and more importantly, how many clients did you land from each channel? Because at the end of the day, that is what's going to and tell you the truth and what's going to actually show you like, hey, you need to double down on this and you need to stop, for example, cold email or cold DM because it's not panning out and that's not where they're living. So that's one way to figure it out. It's through data and that does take time. That does take a lot of volume right, over time, just like an ad, right? We, we see how it works over impressions over time if we need to switch something or test something or if it's good to go. Now, the other way is by doing this and I like how you're cold calling them. You can actually position yourself as a college student, you know, just do it very genuinely and be like, hey, my name is Marcus. I'm a college student at XYZ. Like you up. I'm looking to just do research in this industry as one of my assignments and projects. If you don't mind, can I have a quick two, three minutes of your time to kind of learn about uh, your guys' market, how, like your kind of day-to-day? -day. My goal of this project is to understand uh, your re like the market, right? And then that's where you can tie in questions like, you know, revenue even. You can even tie in questions like where you hang out. How do you find your current clients? Oh, a lot of them are coming from word of mouth. We do a lot of Instagram posting. And if you do have five or eight times or just like take an hour of your day to get in front of these guys, you'll get enough like patterns to say like, oh, these personal trainers in general are saying hanging out on Instagram. They're DMing, they're posting a lot, they're focused on that. That's generally the direction you want to take. So those are the two ways. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can probably do a quick audit of your um, script, but essentially, you know, just remember, th this is going to help for any platform you're on, guys. Like, just remember the intent of that platform, right? Facebook, you know, they're there to connect with other people, friends. You're there to um, check up on friends and the highlights of them, like what they're doing in their life. Instagram, very energetic, very entertaining now, very educational too you know you want to match the energy so when i go into a script i don't care how it looks like it has it doesn't have to be the perfect script all i want to do is match the energy first off am i do i sound positive am i being concise in my language because we know dms if it's like a freaking five block text they're going to think it's an automatic scam or you know it's not something that they want to read because they just want to have fun right so that's why being concise is important in dms email very professional right very professional get straight to the point talk about what you can do for them and ask if that's something they're worth the chat right cold call it. <laughs> Cold calling is like probably if it's a, any sport, it's like American football just or rugby. It's just super physical. You know, same thing applies like the mentality of cold calling. You want to be direct. You want to make it like a no brainer. You want to ask for another 10, 20 seconds of their time if this is worth a, a Zoom chat. So you want to have that mentality of like based on my script, how can I make this more tailored towards the actual platform? Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask, as you said, for example, if they get their clients from word to mouth, what do I do? I mean, there's other options. I mean, if they're then that first off is a potential client because they need to get on Instagram uh, or like ads. The second is um, rarely would they just say it's word of mouth or referrals. But if they did, again, then that's awesome. You can help them get on social media and actually pitch them. The second thing is, um, you know, just ask them like if they just say, oh, yeah, most of it's word of mouth. I'm like, okay, are you dabbling or doing anything with Facebook, Instagram or, you know, that fun app called TikTok? You know, they'll be like, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm dabbling into it. And then you can ask them, like, do you see a lot of your clients coming from there? You know, this is a, just a marketing question because I'm in a marketing class. And they're like, actually, no, I don't. And I'm like, why? Like, oh, you know, they're actually a lot on uh, LinkedIn. It's like, oh, like, just have a conversation with these guys. You're not pitching them, actually. Yeah. Like, just get okay. to understand the, their business, right? I'm firing for there, bro. I was thinking, because I want to try and help as much people as possible. So yeah. why don't we make like a little game plan that people can just kind of plug and play? Let's do it. So what should we include as main things here script um drop um what current monthly revenue you're at you know if you, you this is a safe space go ahead and drop it It allows me to understand what everyone needs to focus on if you're at 50k a month you definitely are need to focus on scaling if you're at 0k a month we got to talk about offer and where to outreach and how to actually send more 
Okay. Thanks guys. So this is good. This is good. So I obviously don't want to talk about the advanced stuff. Number one, you guys got to understand is, you know, just in the age of agency world, it's uh, many of the niches we're in, you know, quote unquote saturated. Now you might be going into, you're like, oh, he's talking about saturation. So maybe he's going to say, I should go into an innovative niche, like cool contracting, right. Or some, or tattoo shops, right. I'm not saying that. Yeah, Blue Ocean does help. It does in the short term, right? You guys have all seen Tony Lee. He really scaled to se zero to 17K, but now it's you know saturated. So inevitably, every niche is going to be saturated and it te technically is. What I want to say is that saturation is really good and people, and it's a hot take in my opinion, because a lot of people downplay a saturation when it's actually probably a good thing, because what it means is your clients know they need ads. You know that an agency can scale in this niche. So the belief, the practicality of it, you can scale in it too. And the thing that turns people off is that people believe it's like a monopoly, right? Like when I was working gym niche, people were like deterred away because mainly of gym launch and Alex Ramosi. Well, he's not working with like, he's only working with like 30, 40% of the market, if anything, who are, who's going to help the other 60%. And so same thing in real estate, same thing in med spa, dentistry, all these other saturated platforms, solar, even, you know, there's so for every one agency there is, there's 500 or a thousand more clients in your niche. There's more for, there's enough for everyone to scale to hundred K or more. And I just want to let you guys know about that. So if that's ever in the back of your minds, my thing is don't pivot so easily. I hate to like, I hate it when I see people in, I work with Joe Kaplan and his community. I do not like it when I see people pivot because they can't crack on outreach. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like that, that's the reason why you're switching. I want you to like really think of it as like your sport. Your, your niche is like your sport. You're going to get better at it. You're going to get skilled at it. You're going to understand the game. You're going to understand your competitor. You're going to understand your clients, right? And if anything, you guys should stay in one niche. Just, I should point that out there. So we're around that range. Let's, let's see. Yeah, let's do a game plan for everyone. So like where to start outreach, how to increase your vote. Because at the end of the day, uh, Arturo, you can write this down. This is the theme that we're going to talk about. Do more, do better. And lastly, do innovation or innovate. That's all you need to think about right now. With that said, I'm going to go quick. Do more. I, I like Joel Kaplan literally asking himself, how can we get more appointments for our sales team? You know, I'm asking myself, how can we set more appointments for me to take calls and close more clients? You want to start thinking that. So let's go, let's go through a list. Let's go really fast right now. Dylan, if I, if I you don't mind me calling you out, how are you doing, man? Yeah, what's good? So you're in car detailing. Awesome. Facebook, IG, Google review campaign. Awesome. You're currently doing 75 DMs on Facebook and IG and one hour of cold calling. And your offer is 15 ceramic coatings in 30 days, or you don't pay. Uh, I, saying the word, or you don't pay is like, I don't know what's up with that, but it's really catching people's attention because it's like, oh, I don't pay, I don't put down anything. So this is great. Are you the one sending out Dylan, um, the 75 DMs on IG and Facebook right now? Yeah. Okay. Specifically, what's the um like twenty five or thirty here in Facebook, and then the rest are on IG. What's that looking like? Uh, doing twenty five on three accounts on IG, and then twenty five on Facebook on three accounts. So seventy five each. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you a quick, not secret, but like it's what I've been telling people in Agency Lab. Naturally, you can actually send fifty messages a day per account, new messages per account. You need to ramp it up though. You need to make sure you got age accounts. You got to make sure that it has good enough posts of like you, business, life. Uh, like what I mean by business, like it, it literally, like if you're in a gym niche, you can literally show pictures of you in a gym with the gym owner. You can show pictures of you in a suit. That's totally fine. Just when you, when you create more accounts, Here's, here's what I challenge everyone to do, because I feel like a lot of people are doing IGDMs based on what I'm seeing here. What you will need to do is have five to eight IG accounts, all, um, you know, I think there's bulk accounts by. Yep. You need to get like 2013, 2011 accounts and get five and eight of them. I want you guys to help each other out. I want you guys to follow each other because they really love it when they have real people following each other and other people who are real you know, pages following each other. That's what I tell people, like 50 people in Joel's uh, course, like, hey, just follow each other when you create these accounts. It helps you guys look more credible and more importantly, not stop you from sending 50 messages a day. And so I want you guys to ramp up to doing 200 messages a day. Now you're like, whoa, how long does that take? So personally, it takes me an hour to find 20 new prospects, sometimes lower, sometimes like 10, 15. So if I did it for an hour, I would get around 100 messages. So what about the 200 Marcus? That's where if you have the financial capabilities, you should hire a free uh, virtual assistant or an appointment setter. You can have them start at, at $1, $2, right? And, you know, offer promotions, raises. People love that. 
you know, because they're working hard for it. Yeah, that's only like 160, 320, like 320 US dollars a day, for example. A month. Um, a month. Yeah. Yo, you said, you, like, you said a day. You said a day. Yeah. Oh, my bad, bro. Did I say right. that? Fuck. Imagine that, bro. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, a lot of my appointment setters, they're starting out still at one dollar an hour, and I give them a raise for two dollars an hour. Like, and but the funny thing is, they are happy when I give them a raise, and they are grateful that they go up to two dollars an hour. Uh, Marcus, yeah, I, um, because uh, I got like three VAs that I was like just texting with, and like once they hear like like for example, one of them, one dollar an hour was fine at the beginning, but then I started like saying like, okay, you have to send on three accounts, you know, so you work eight hours because now you're not gonna do shit. And she's like, this is too much work, blah blah, and then she quit. Mm -hmm. And the other ones, uh, they don't do it for an hour. They're like, that's uh, for one dollar an hour. They're like, that's too little. But I do mm -hmm. add like a, a like a bonus. I'm like, if we close a client, you guys get 80 dollar bonus you know but they don't really believe it so they don't really care you know okay here yeah let me go ahead and um if you, if you don't mind i'm gonna really pull back the curtains and show you the operation of all like i have like 40 vas they all start at one dollar an hour i'm gonna show you so it might be just because you you implemented that right from like after you hired them my applications when i hire for more vas i let them know hey you're just starting at one dollar right we're ramping you up. You don't have to have experience. If you do, great. If not, no worries. We'll teach you and train you. And so I'm going to show you the operations. Don't be overwhelmed. What I do is instead of like, hey, when I close someone, it's because now my incentive is like their incentive is based on me. It's not based on their performance. So what you can do is like, hey, if we hit 10, if you hit 10 appointments, every time you hit 10 appointments, you get a, a 20, $30 bonus. Let me show you. This is my culture right here. These guys are mainly from the Philippines. And these guys, they keep track of every appointment they set. I have an appointment setter trainer. She also announces when we book appointments mm -hmm. and we have challenges as a team. You really guys, like if I can get this really over advanced, okay? But you gotta have a culture. You gotta have a culture in your team or else they're not gonna buy the vision. You know what's more important to them than, you know, obviously $1 and then raising them. That's an essential. That's, yeah. you cannot look, overlook that. But the next important thing, to be honest with you, other than money, and let me preface this, this goes for appointment set, it's go for a media buyer, this goes for any team member you have. That's going to help your agency grow. You've got to sell them on the vision. And the way you do that, practically, when you hire someone, whether it's a VA, whether it's appointment setter, whatever their role is, you got to have a course. You know, if you have goal high level, you can make a course that literally shows them, hey, here's our company. Here's why we're helping people in this niche. Here's why I started this business, why your role is important. Here are our core values. I literally can go up to all 38 of them and they will know all their core values because I hammer it into them. That's how crazy culture is. And as you can see, the benefit of it is people who are even paying $1 an hour, they will stay because they know that their mission, their goals are aligned with my goals and my company. And so that is something you guys cannot overlook. It's not something that will get you from zero to 10K, but it is something that will get you from 10K or even zero all the way to 100k a month because without it you will not have a lot you'll have a lot of people leaving we'll have a lot of people not believing in you so yeah. don't overlook it last thing again just do more do it better and what i mean by do it better you know we covered do it more right you can think of it i want to leave you guys with things to think like to think on your own because that's what entrepreneurs are that's what we're here to do right we're here to think for our agency and build it that way i'm not going to give you copy and paste script i'm not going to give you any of that if you guys did want me to do literally do it for you then reach out to me i mean that's different but i need you guys to think i need you guys to think a lot of people will say like do more and stop thinking just do it but you are as an entrepreneur need to think like how can i do more right? Like IG, for example, you know, if you're going to do cold calling, maybe get a power dial that's going to help you send like call more people at once. And then whoever picks up, they shut down the other like calls and you can actually pick up that one number. Maybe in email, you can use instantly or G monster and you'll be able to send out, I don't know, like 2,400 emails a day. Like I did think about how you can do more doing it better. Just simply means how's my script. Is it actually getting replies? How can I actually engage with these people? How can I get in front of them? Maybe my follow-up needs work, doing it better. And then lastly is innovate, like the offer. How can I innovate on my offer so it's slightly different? Just even being slightly different allows you to get so many yeses. You know, I'll be, I'll be very uh, transparent. Like Dylan, I have a lot of people in the detailing niche that are doing similar thing. Maybe what you can change is by saying, I'll help you do this, like get more jobs using TikTok ads. And I'm willing to guarantee 15 codings or you don't pay. Okay, but... People want to get on TikTok. It's a buzzword, right? And here's the funny thing, Dylan, I'll leave you with this. I did that. It got me from five to 15K a month because the only person in the gym niche in 2022 that was running TikTok ads at the beginning of the year was Gym Launch. 
And so all the people were like, oh, I got to get on this, right? Because screw Facebook. I've heard that people are offering that, but I'm different. What you got to do is just tell them it as a hook. And then on the intro demo call, you sell them on your core service, which is Facebook and Instagram. And be like, hey, actually, you would be better on Facebook and Instagram. It's proven to work. And I can show you how it looks like over a quick 30, 45 minute call. Yes, TikTok will get you famous. We got to get you on there because it's the long term. But with these two different platforms, it's better to not chase two rabbits at once. So let's chase after the proven method for it. And once we get that working, you're getting a lot of leads and it's qualified there. It's working, proven. We duplicate it onto TikTok mm -hmm. and then you're just spreading like wildfire. And they love it. And you want to know the end result? 30 or 40 of my clients that I got through TikTok, only like 90% of them were just on Facebook and Instagram. The others were the other 10% were using TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. And then they were like, wow, Facebook and Instagram are working better. Let's just stay away from TikTok. I'm like, okay, we'll touch it later when it works. But the thing is, use it as a hook, for example. And this can go with not only just TikTok, but this can go with AI. I want to help you get more DMs using AI. Or like, I'll help you with AI, uh, get more jobs using AI SEO, right? And that's just a, a bonus that you're running. But Facebook is really how you get them leads. You got to think about ways to just start the conversation and get them into your ecosystem. Because once they're in your ecosystem, now you can do all these reactivations. That, hey, I got this new innovative thing. Hey, I'm doing this offer. Who You can come at this kind of price all these things you just got to get them in your ecosystem now yeah i get that i'm gonna right. definitely have to try that yeah give it a shot give it a shot it, it grabs people's ears it grabs people's attention i have one more question if it if it's like a, it's like a 10 second thing since you say you have such a good team of vas like where do you find high quality vas like that that's a great question um yeah. i'm gonna shout out arturo for this because he gave me ideas i was able to test it out myself and i was like wow this works for me what i do is i still fish in the same pond but i basically just weed out those who aren't just qualified who don't have the speed of their uh, laptop if they even have have a laptop if they even they lie about their resume like so funny story one of my VAs back in December and January she's now my HR specialist which is really cool and so what she does is yeah she hops on a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them still because she does have the time for it for me I used to do group interviews and then just like pull out who's good who's qualified and then here's what I recommend everyone does do a week trial boot camp with them so if they make it you know you have like maybe if you're looking for two VAs in you know, you nail it down to five. Great. That's awesome. Or maybe do, like just to say three, three out of the two. You're only looking for two and there's three and they're really good. You don't know who to pick. Great. Okay. Take them through a a paid boot camp. So essentially they're going to do what they need to do, but you're judging and helping them along the way. Like don't, don't neglect that a boot camp means you're not helping them. You are helping them train them as if you're there your VAs already. And then by the end of Friday, you'll see who's sending 100 messages or the amount of messages I need them to send, who's listening to me, who's being positive, who's being consistent, who's actually asking the right questions or questions in general. And who's that one person that isn't? No worries. I'm going to pass them on to another agency, you know, maybe make 400, 300, 200, whatever as a VA placement, make my money back from it. And uh, I'll continue with these two VAs. Because here's sure. the thing, you have three VAs, they're all competing. They, they should indirectly know that they're competing against each other, but I want them to work as as a team because I love it. I it has one of my friendly um, core values, friendly competition, accountability, and teamwork. As you saw, my team wins. We're all supporting each other. We're all helping each other out. Teamwork. And so it kind of allows you to see who works better in teams because at the end of the day, you're not just going to have one VA, hopefully. You're probably mm -hmm. going to have two, if not three. And so if they are really good, they could potentially teach the other VAs. Like I had one of mine or a couple of mine. And, you know, they can be a great team. They're going to be in the long term and they're going to help you build the vision of your team like what happened with me. Well, Marquez, uh, before yeah. you go, what do you want to leave everyone here with? You know, first off, I want to stay connected with you guys. If there's a way, like if you have a Discord channel, that'd be sick. I can jump in, just talk to you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are killers. For sure. I'll um, send you an invite. If you want, you can also drop your IG in chat so everyone can drop you a follow. Yeah. And again, it, you know, so, sorry for the shameless plug, but again, I do give this more as an opportunity. If you guys are looking to like help, like for help with IG DMs, um, I can speak to you more directly and heck, I can give you last like insights over another 15 30 minutes we can have individually that's just my way of giving back to agency community my last thought is this i want you guys to fail fast i don't want you to have this engineer rocket science mindset where it's like you got to make sure things are perfect the only way you'll figure out is by failing fast
and trying things out. And the last thing is, I don't know that by the looks of everyone, everyone kind of looks relatively young, like in their teenage years or young 20s. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. I want to say no matter what, especially for the young people though, I want you guys to focus on the skills and not the results. Something that Arturo said, you know, introducing me how, yes, I'm great at IG, but I can do other things. I don't want to just like say that lightly and I'm not bragging, but because I've been here for five years, you dynamically work yourself as a business owner. You get so good as a business owner. And sometimes you can even think about, man, I should go to these Kairos now and do rev share because I know how to fix your business, not just do their marketing. I want you to focus on the skill rather than the result because the, the results will follow the skill. And when you mess up an intro call, when you mess up a demo call, when you mess up a client result, I want you to look at it not as an ends of result. Like, sure, yeah, that, that was a bad result. But I want you to look at it as a skill that you're building, that you're getting better at this. There's been times I've lost so many clients. They churn and burn. They ask for refunds. I lose a client on a pick on like a 5K deal. There's many times it will happen and it's normal. you got to build the skill. Focus this, focus on the skill, not the result. Awesome, With that man. said. Um, really, really appreciate yeah. it, Marquez. Yeah. One more thing, just kind of a off topic thing, but it went through my mind. I want you guys to go into, uh, you know, your voice, your sales voice will be very different, right? Compared like how it works versus mine. Maybe you're more direct, whatever. But my thing is, I want you to go into every sales call thinking with one thing. How can I help this person get what they need in order to continue growing their successful business and helping their clients, whether it's me or whether it's not me. And if it's not me, I will point them to the best place. And the reason why I say that is because just like as a very side type, like side topic tip, it helps you go in there with the doctor mindset rather than a salesman mindset. You need to go in there as a doctor being like, how can I help this person? What does this person suffer with? emotionally in their business, physically, financially, and am I the solution? If so, I'm the doctor. Then they're going to see that. Cool, guys. Appreciate it, man. Guys, drop W's in the chat. Nice. Yeah, amazing Probably information, guys. man. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Keep crushing it. Keep killing it. This won't be the last time I'll see you guys individually. Uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. See you, bro. See you. Mm -hmm. Take care. What do you guys think? Well, uh, actually, that fire. was fucking fire. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you guys want dollar an hour VAs, remember your... You're in this mentorship, so you're allowed to ask. You ask, I give. Simple as that. I want to try and help you guys as much as I can with the outreach because obviously outreach is what leads to clients and clients is what leads to scaling, right? So so what I do is I create a, a course through Go High Level and you create it through memberships, products. Products is where you create it and then offers is where you get like this link generated shit. And then as Mark has said, also company culture is super important. So we have the introduction, our values, missions, and goals. And then we have what is SMMA so they can understand what it is because a lot of them have no idea, right? And for you to train someone who has no idea what SMMA is, it's a bit hard. So I have a video here on explaining what it is. Their role and importance to Virafic, tasks, work, and priority. So up until here, it's all pretty much company culture. And you'll see like random questions here and there. And those are pretty much tests, like little tests to make sure that they understood this first part and uh, they have to get 100% correct in order to pass the next phase, you could say. And then we have the appointment setting part, which is setting up the Facebook account, warming up the Facebook account. Uh, this is this is a new one that I started doing because accounts were getting banned. So we started warming them up to fix it. So that's why it doesn't have like a, a little thumbnail. How to prospect and then how to access the scripts and assets, how to handle objections, which is basically an objection sheet and then where they can contact us. Like we have a specific Discord channel for questions like that. And then three training videos. So these are when I trained a group together, and then I just record it and put it here as extra resources, you could say. So this whole course is around two hours. Every single person that's watched this entire course is ready to go uh, for sending out DMs. So again, you go to memberships, products, you would just create a new product. And then here you add all your things and you would just add a video. Uh, most of mine are just literally looms that I downloaded some text if you want with some documents and that's literally it. And then you go to offers, create a new offer, value it at $0 and then connect it to your product and that's it. And then you just get the link and then that's what we train them with. And then after we, after they watch the course, we have daily meetings every single day at the start of their shift where we meet all together in a group. And there we go over KPIs and we also go over scripts. We also go over, sometimes I will go into their accounts 
and say, okay, you could have said this instead of this. Then they ask in those calls as well, what should I say to this, to a specific DM that they don't know how to respond? And then we answer it there. So I was wondering, like, I had to turn down like a potential client because he didn't have like very much social proofing or reviews. Do you think it's important for them to like have like a decent following or very Absolutely many reviews? Absolutely not. Because I, I didn't want to take them on because I didn't think you I would didn't be able fail. to. Yeah, because without people seeing like, like the social proofing and like people actually respecting his work and rating him, I didn't want them to like not want to buy his product, only be able to get him leads and not actually be able to convert any of them. There's three ways you can go about it. One is just to make a super, super irresistible risk-free offer. And if you do that, where someone is literally saying, look, I'll give you an example. If you tell someone, I'll pay for your ad spend, you don't have to pay me anything. I'll get you this amount of clients and it's all in a contract and you only pay me if I deliver. Would you care if they had reviews or not? No. Right. The second way would be to do a review campaign where you would message their whole list of clients, previous clients, and ask them for a review in return of a coupon or a discount or an offer or something that's free. That's a really good way. Uh, a lot of people do that review campaigns. Like a yeah, ton of people. I do that. I just think of adding like a coupon to it. If they don't have a customer list or, or a database or something like that, what you can also do is and this is a bit more gray area, but you know, you've all probably had some experience in drop shipping. So you know, when you're like importing a product, you're like, fuck, now I gotta get reviews, right? But you just get the reviews of the product because it's the absolute same thing that you're selling, right? It's reviews from the actual thing that you're gonna be selling. So in a way you could do that, it's a bit more gray zone because you're not actually selling like a physical product that's exactly the same all the time. But you know, I just didn't think people don't want to spend like $700 up front on a ceramic coating without like knowing the guy's worth it because he was like still a pretty new company in his area. So I just wasn't sure. But I'll definitely try the first like, two, up. man. Yeah, I'll definitely have to try the first two and hit like some smaller companies up. Kyan, what was your question, bro? No, it was kind of about to be the same. I was going to say, do you think it's important, for example, if I do cold calling, the review? that they have for example if they have three reviews do you think i should still give them a call well here's the thing if they have a lot of reviews they it's most hard. likely have a lot of money yes. and they most likely already have marketing therefore mm -hmm. they have many reviews if they don't have a lot of reviews it'll probably be much easier to sign them because they don't have reviews they don't have clients but it'll be likely that they're just starting out and they don't have that much money yeah. for access to capital for your service no i was thinking right. I, what i was doing is kind of just calling almost every business except for example people who have 150 reviews or higher than that yeah because it's impossible first of all they have like a, a system already and i wouldn't be able to get to the owner you know what i would do if i were you do different ranges so you can do zero to 50 50 to 150 and then 150 plus divide those into one two and three and then do a bunch of cold calls on each and then check the kpis what's giving you the best results what's not and then whatever gets you the best results that's what you double down on okay so you're splitting into into three parts right and whenever you figure out you know it has to be like after a good amount of dials no right? after like 100 each yeah i would even say a bit more maybe 200 dials each maybe two 300 dials each after doing that and you figure out which one's the best one then whatever results you got on that you'll get three times more because you'll only be doing that one afterwards make sense yeah 100 all right guys i'm gonna hop off um i hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> the call i'll definitely be bringing on more people thank you man all right, guys. awesome good night and i'll see you guys tomorrow see yeah, you see bro.